everybody. It's Sophie and Marco. And Marco. And we're doing our review of review. Fear Street. Fear Part Street. Two. Part two. 1978. And Marco is going to start out because he just watched it. I watched it early this morning when I got up at 3.30. Isn't that nice? <laughs> So go ahead, Marco. What did you think about this lovely movie? <sighs> yes, there was some heavy breathing in the movie. <laughs> okay, Marco. <laughs> on with the show. <laughs> okay, Marco. <laughs> Marco, do you want me to do it? Want me to start out? I don't think anybody wants to listen to you laughing. Okay, uh, so what are we reviewing? Fear Street Part, part two? 2, 1978. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I was like, I was, <laughs> this, <laughs> and see, the, the thing is, with the unfortunate thing with Safi is, uh, I have to censor myself since she's around, and so the things that I would say about this movie, I can't say in front of her, and so that's what's unfortunate about this review, uh, because this movie was just so bad. It's just so embarrassing. I mean, it's it's the same thing over and over with these movies that come out nowadays and the people who get hired to make them, they don't get hired based off of qualifications. They get hired based off of different reasons. And for, uh, I mean, I looked up this biatch. She had the help of this one guy and he literally doesn't have any other writing credit except for this movie. And I just think that's really embarrassing that, that they're they're hiring people not based off of merit, but based off of other things. Or just I don't even, I don't know what the hell they're thinking, why they allowed this piece of shit movie to be made. This movie is so bad. I thought the first one was bad. And the first one was terrible. I mean I'm never I'm not i I'm not finishing the first one. And I never will, because that was miserable, and this was even more miserable. But at least the first one had that opening scene. This movie doesn't have any scene that even comes close to the opening scene of the first movie. And so that's how bad this movie is. And it's really... I mean, there's nothing good to say about this movie. There's nothing good, except for, I guess, the cast was really good. I liked all the actors, except for the shitty ones from the first one. You know, the main biatch and her brother, uh, who we don't know how they're related at all, because they're, 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 one's Mexican and one's black, so is one of them adopted? Is one of them a step, uh, kid? Like, there's no explanation whatsoever, and it's like just complete BS, this terrible writing, and, uh, you know, both of them are trash, uh, the adult version of the character from the story is trash. And so there's no one to like except for the characters from this 1978 story. And this 1978 story, I wouldn't even call it a story. Because this was just an embarrassment. The whole movie is basically the same things over and over again. Like, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to remember because... The movie was just so forgettable, too, because it was just so bad. Everything in it was just disposable garbage that you could just uh, crumple up and throw in the trash. And, uh, you know, you got the guys chasing and killing them, and then they sit around and they talk about their feelings. <laughs> Excuse you. Fuck off with that shit, Sophie. Marco, don't say that. Don't talk like that. Fuck off with that Marco. shit, Sophie. So, they're right, like, a killer's coming, 
And then it's like, I'm really sorry that I wasn't a good sister. I'm really sorry. And we need to talk about our feelings now. Oh no, a killer's coming. Let's stand around and talk about how emotional we are. Oh my god, I'm so emotional. Even though there's a killer coming and I don't really care because I'm just going to stand around like a dumb bitch. And I'm I'm not going to take my shirt off because this is this is empowering women. And so women aren't going to take their clothes off, but we're going to have a male character take his entire clothes off and expose himself on screen. We're not going to have this be equal. We're going to have it one-sided. You know, because I, you, you know, you look at slasher movies from the 80s, you look at the Friday the 13th movies, and they all had naked women in it. This movie didn't have none. It had a naked man, yeah, and it was so not, gross. That was, that's not true. They didn't show any, anything of that naked uh, bitch, mean girl. Uh, what was that? What was her name? It was like a dark. Was a a dark haired girl. girl? What was that? What was what was her? I can't even remember because her character was so bad. Her character was so badly written. She didn't even have a character. It's just a cardboard cutout. And she and so this movie, all it has is this naked guy, this fully naked guy, and it's just sickening. And of course, (laughs) that's what you get. That's what you get. When you hire a certain person to direct, oh. that's what you get. Okay. You like that? You like that? We're turning the tables. Instead of ha- uh, sexualizing women, we're going to sexualize all the men, and then all the women don't get sexualized. Wow, that's really equal. Trash. Oh. This is nothing like those slasher movies. We didn't give it to see blood either. We didn't get to see violence. We didn't get to see kills or anything. We just saw some splatters and we saw some quick cuts away while the cuts happen and we don't get to see any violence because this is a modern horror movie. And even though it's on Netflix, for some reason they're still not going to show the violence even though Though they could show whatever the F they wanted and it's on Netflix so it counts as TV and so they can show whatever they want and that includes violence and, and... naked men? Yeah! <laughs> oh boy. In this movie this movie was bad. It referenced Stephen King so many times. This movie, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. I, uh, Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen King. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck about Stephen King. This is Fear Street, written by R. L. Stein. And you don't reference Goosebumps. You don't reference Fear Street. You don't reference R.L. Stein. You reference Stephen King. Hey, guys. Remember Carrie? Hey, guys. Remember that movie from the 70s? Oh, remember The Exorcist? Remember Friday the 13th? Remember that one other movie from the 70s? Oh, my God. That's great writing. You want to get out, Safi? No, but you're Stop sh- touching me. You're shrieking. Ah! Like that? No. Ah! It's hurting my ears. Well, this movie hurt my eyes and my brain. Because with this movie... This should have been... I mean, has Stephen King ever written a camp story, Safi? Because this literally... I have no idea. He's written a lot, but I don't know if he's written a camp story. Oh, he better not. Oh, he better do it because you can get <laughs> you can, you can get this woman to go and make that and ruin that too. She can go make that movie. And she can reference Arl Stein in that and how much sense that would make. I mean, just imagine if you were watching Goosebumps and then all of a sudden in Goosebumps, they're like, Remember Harry Potter? Remember Lord of the Rings? Remember Star Wars? Just imagine, just imagine how terrible that would be. Reference, it's like these references don't even make sense. So we can't even remember Stephen King. He didn't write any camp stories. So how does Stephen King even relate to this? 
Oh, because Carrie, because a woman gets bullied by other women? Oh my God, that's so deep. That's so, oh, that's so well written. Uh, a girl is getting bullied by other girls, and so that means it's like Carrie. Wow, that's really impressive. And then what else? Let, let's just, let's talk about this video movie. Uh, Fear Street Part 2, 1978. I can hardly even see the movie, too. The lighting was, like, straight out of Fargo Season 4. It's like, they're purposeful, like, they, the, the light, whoever did the lighting, who did the lighting, Safi? I don't know. Uh, whoever did it, they knew this movie was bad. And so, <laughs> it was a conspiracy, it was secretly a conspiracy, uh, to actually cover up the bad movie. Like, okay, we know this movie is bad, so let's just not light it at all. So that people can't even watch it. And they can't even see anything. And then people won't even watch the bad movie. They'll turn it off. And I applaud them. I applaud whoever did the lighting. Because they knew this movie was horse shit. And so they they covered it up with bad lighting. And so you want to turn it off. You don't want to watch this terrible movie. This abomination. Uh, this is one of the worst movies ever made. And, uh, and it... It's literally, like, you, you could put this up with any summer camp horror movie. I challenge you to tell me a summer camp horror movie worse than this. Every Friday the 13th movie is better than this. And, and, and there are some terrible Friday the 13th movies. I'm not even a Friday the 13th fan. The only Friday the 13th movies I like are parts, like, uh, two, three, four, and seven. I don't even like any of the other Friday the 13th, and I think this movie's bad. This movie is worse than Return to Sleepaway Camp. And now, Safi hasn't seen Return to Sleepaway Camp because I didn't subject her to that torture yet. But I think that I should because she loved this movie, and she's just waiting <laughs> to strike and to talk about, to shout her support for this uh, terrible a uh, trash, bad, dumb movie. Uh, you know, this is worse. Return to Sleepaway Camp is like Citizen Kane compared to this movie. <laughs> and Return to Sleepaway Camp, it, let me tell you the plot of Return to Sleepaway Camp. It's basically the same plot as this movie. There's a kid, and he's fat. And uh, he, he he constantly makes, makes crude noises like... <laughs> And that's what this movie was, really. It was just one long... <laughs> and so he makes... <laughs> noises. And everyone bullies him. And he complains and he whines. And he's like, Why are you guys so mean to me? Why are you guys... And all these guys start dying at sleepaway camp. And, and everyone thinks that he's the killer because he's the fat, annoying kid. And so it's like, oh, he must be the killer because he's the fat kid. And then at the end, uh, the, it turns out that Angela is back and that she's actually alive and that she was the killer all along. And so the movie ends with her laughing and she's like, ha, ha, ha. You know the woman we met at the convention. That's her, oh, and she's I've seen that. and she's like, <laughs> and she's standing over the body of the fat kid that, who she just killed, oh. and it's like, ha ha ha! Angela was back. The twist of this movie—it's so clever because it's literally uh, the most stupidest shit you could come up with. Just like with this movie. And so with this movie, you got this girl, the main girl, and. Uh, She's probably the third best actor in the movie. Are you talking about the big sister? No, the little sister. The big oh. sister is trash, uh, garbage character. The, 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 the little sister, for some reason, she's considered weird. There's it's the thing. There's no explanation she for... She has red hair. That, that's not a thing, Sophie. Oh, to some people, it is. Well, South Park said that gingers have no souls. And if, <laughs> if the writers of South Park wrote this movie, then I would, I would agree that it's because she has red hair, but there's, <laughs> but they treat her older sister fine, and so it's like, there's literally no reason why she's considered weird at all, 
and and but yet they call her the weird girl the whole movie even though there's a girl over to the right uh, who has hair that looks like a mop it looks like you took a mop and you like trimmed it into like a punk style and put it on her head and and it like it doesn't even look like her actual hair and she has this weird grin that she does all the time because she's so weird and it's like hello uh go bully that girl she's the weird one she looks uh like a creepy gremlin monster thing and she should have been the killer because she looks so creepy and every time she smiled it just made it just, it just made me want to uh, make a cross with my fingers and say go away go away get out of here creepy gremlin but the best actor in this video was Tommy and Tommy was the killer. I don't care about spoilers because this movie fucking sucks. Are you talking about the and, hatchet boy? Yeah, Tommy. Because he he's basically like he he's basically Robert Pattinson, but good. And so he <laughs> he was the best part of this movie. And he, he really did a good job. And he you know, he looks like a killer. Uh and he and he's actually really good. And you know, if if it, if if he was in Twilight, Twilight would have been good, and so he was actually the best part of the movie. And it's it's too bad that you know he really didn't get to have much more of a character, no. because what the story was really reminiscent of was Night of Dark Shadows, where uh, the couple moves to that mansion, and then the the boyfriend turns evil and he's possessed by the witch. That's literally the same plot is Night of Dark Shadows. This movie literally mm. plagiarizes from Night of Dark Shadows and other things as well. I mean, there's a laundry list of things that this uh, just takes from and takes from and takes from. And, you know, Night of Dark Shadows, he actually has a character, and it's fantastic. And, you know, he's scary because he's David Selby, and David Selby is a giant jackass in real life, and so he was really able to play. And I don't think that this guy in uh, Fear Street 2 is a jackass in real life, probably, but he did a great job, and it's too bad. All the actors are really good in this movie, but they are not... They're not given a good script. The script is so bad. They're at camp, but nothing... <laughs> this, <laughs> this isn't like camp at all. This is like... <laughs> this movie really... <laughs> the, <laughs> the people in this movie, instead of getting weird degrees, they should have gotten degrees in history because they literally have no idea what they're talking about. They didn't do any research into finding out what camp was was like. These kid, did these people, did these writers for this movie, did they even go to camp as kids? Because I highly doubt it. And 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 they need to research like 1970s. Like there's nothing 70s about this movie except for the terrible soundtrack that keeps playing over and over again. They just turn on some random 70s song and then they just turn on another random 70s song and like people are literally just talking. And they're just talking, having a conversation, character conversation about, like, you're a really bad sister. Oh, I'm really bad sister. Oh, you're a really bad sister. And in the background, it's like, it's like the 70s song. And it's like, what correlation do these two things have in common? Like, yeah. these, these two, <laughs> like, that's the whole movie. This movie's music is horrible. And the music was just so bad. So, again, it, it's too bad, too, because the lighting was poor, uh, which I'm glad, because then I didn't have to watch as much of it, because it's like, you know, I can't see what's going on. So how do I watch it? Do I do I squint my eyes? I already have glasses on, and then it, do I have to squint my eyes some more in order to see this movie? What am I supposed to do? Because it's so dark. <coughs> Safi? Okay, well, what do you rank, rank it or rate it? I mean, I don't know. You do your review first. Talk okay, about this well, video. Uh, you loved it. Marco, really stop now. Well, this okay. movie should already stop, so that's good enough. My review is entitled, quote, Maybe when this is over, we can start a book club. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. I almost passed out because that's a line that was told by 
the sheriff, who is not a sheriff because this is when he was a kid, high school kid, in the 70s. He's a teenage boy, yeah. and his whole plot is that he he's really scared. He's like, I want to be a sheriff because that's what my, fam my family is pressuring me, and I got to become the sheriff of Fear Street. Land and that, and that was said over many but, times. But I, but I like the weird girl. I like spiders, and I like the weird girl. And what reason is she weird? There's nothing explained whatsoever. But he actually, there a killer is coming. They know the killer is coming, and and he's with the red-haired girl, the long red-haired girl, the younger sister, and. And he says this line, maybe when this is over, we can start a book club. I, I, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and so I'm really, my question is, why are you insulting R.L. Stein, lady? And I'm talking about the director and who is also the writer. <laughs> and uh, these are some other things. My, my review is thrown into two parts. And then I have my little review, like what I'm going to give it in terms of food. And then that's it. Okay, so part one is, what did I dislike about this movie? The gratuitous sex scenes. There were at least two or three. There was one. And it was unnecessary to the story. And um, I... I'm really mad how you treated R.L. Stein, how you could do that, because it was sickening. <laughs> it's stupid. I mean, well, it just isn't well, believable. It's well, stupid, and it's well, meaningless, and well, it's just stupid. Let's, I, talk, let's talk about that first sex scene, because there's this hilariously bad sex scene, and it's like a typical modern movie sex scene, a modern horror movie sex scene, because uh, both of them have all of their clothes on, and somehow they're having sex, and it doesn't look real at all, and it looks it looks terrible, and it's just it's so embarrassing. That's why, and it's why like, do it? And it's like why do it? They didn't even have it, like it, it's it looks so bad. Like you you can't even do a sex scene right. Like who like what 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 is your deal? You can't even film a sex scene like the most basic. Uh, film uh, his, uh, in history like this is a scene that it's like it's it's like a, a quick scene that just happens in like five seconds and yet it, it looks so bad and you can tell it's fake is it because one of the actors is a pussy is it because one of them uh, has a problem with doing that then fire them fire them and replace them with an actor who will do their fucking job okay well I just didn't I didn't appreciate them doing it at all. It was fake. It didn't bring anything to the story. Well, so it, why it, do it? It did because that's what slasher movies have in them, Sophie. Well, I thought it was stupid. Well, okay? I think that. And then let's throw some '70s music into a scene, like uh, a slap in the face. I mean, they would have uh, all of a sudden they would have like uh, the Hatchet Boy running after you and they as soon as they would do that they throw in a 70s song like blah, blaring all of a sudden and then they blare it completely out you know not even the whole song i don't think i'm from the 70s so i ought to know <laughs> and um and it was like a slap in the face <laughs> and well, I'll talk about, there was only one section of the whole movie, and oh. that was with Marco, it's my opinion, but it was, it was with the boy and the hatchet <laughs> going after the people. Oh. What is he doing? <sighs> okay, we're back to my review, Safi, of the Fear Street 2... Yeah. 1978. Let's, let's let's give an example of how bad the music was. There was that one scene where uh where the the girl who's considered weird for some reason, she's running in this building and the hatchet guys going after her and then this loud song comes on and it says, "Carry on my wayward son." Oh. oh <laughs> 
and it just, it's just randomly playing that song for like 30 seconds and then it ends all of a sudden. And That's it's what like, I'm saying. It was like a slap <laughs> in the face. It's so weird. And they're like, you draw back in shock and horror, just, not because of the what's going on in the scene, but because the mo- the song hits you in the face. <laughs> the real what, horror what the was heck? the music. What the heck? You're insulting the people who did the music because it was it was a good song. It was a, some good some good music, and they uh, screwed it up. What what they just didn't belong in there at all. It didn't. And see, and what I said like before, it did not contribute a thing to the movie. Well, what okay. about the part where they're sitting in the counselors? Uh, they're sitting in the the cafeteria, and then it's like. Duh! is know. playing and they're talking and it's like don't fear the reaper Ugh. and it's like what does this have to do with anything that's going on this has no relevance and you know, just because that song was played in Halloween means that you gotta play it in this is like is that how lazy it is nowadays with the people who do the music for movies I mean just think about the music that they did for the Goosebumps show that was all original music for the most part There might have been a couple of songs that they took. Other than that, everything was highly good original music. Why didn't you get the people who did the music for Goosebumps? Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on. Okay, another thing I didn't like was the uh, unemotional character who seems extremely uncomfortable being an actor. Now, the sheriff is not a sheriff yet. He's a kid. Oh, we're not talking about him because actually he he came to he came to work to do a job. He may not be the best, but he actually did work. And so it's the uh, boy who plays the brother. Now they were only in the movie. The, these are the two characters: the sister and the brother from the first uh, movie. They're only in the movie at the very beginning and at the very end. But he just does not seem comfortable being an actor. I'm not criticizing him because I think he's a bad person or some other crappy reason that somebody out there might think I'm doing. No. He doesn't seem comfortable. I'm sorry. And if you don't ha- if you don't is he is does he have like a stage mother? Do you all know what a stage mother is? I've seen this where the mother pushes the kid or somebody in the family. Maybe not a mom. Maybe somebody else. Pushing the kid to do something he really doesn't want to do. I don't know. But he doesn't seem comfortable. And who are we talking about again? Uh, I don't know what his name is. He's an African-American boy. His name is Eugene from Your Honor. And he is, once again, he is a curse to the things that he is in. Well, no. He's not. uh, He is a curse. He is such a... He is possessed by the witch of the stage mother. That is what's going on. Whatever. That's the true plot of this series. Well, he... he, I'm not holding him responsible for uh, the crap in the movie. It's like he's asleep. It's like this kid is like 15 years old, and he's acting like Bruce Willis acts at age 80. Uh, Bruce Willis is an 80. Well, he acts 80, and that's how this kid acts. He acts like he's... 80-year-old Bruce Willis sleepwalking through Unbreakable Part 5. Okay, whatever, but I just think he's not comfortable, and if you don't want to be an actor, hon, get out and do something that you want to do. Don't let other people make you do, or you want to do some other kind of media, then go ahead, but don't do what you don't want to do. It's not fair and it's not right. Okay, now, let's see. What What can I say next? Okay, the lack of information about what was going on or the lack of cohesiveness, leaving the viewer and me confused as to what is happening, why is whatever is happening happening, or why are the characters doing what they're doing? And I'm not going to say anything. If you want to watch this movie, go ahead and you can see. Some of it, it just especially at the beginning and the end, which I'm going to have to watch the end all over again. Uh, uh, I, I'm confused about certain details. And I and I was confused in the other one, but 
to me, they, they, they explain some things, but it's just not cohesive. R.L. Stein, like I said, was a really good storyteller. And he did not complicate things. He just made a straight up story and um, that you could understand and you could either like it or not like it. Mainly, I think people liked his stories. Why would they buy all his books? My God, he's written so many books and they were uh, bestsellers. I don't know uh, about today. So anyway. Well, you remember what they called his books on the first movie, right? Safi, what did they say? I don't know. What, the, at the beginning of the first movie, when that mom is purchasing a Fear Street book for her daughter, what does she say about Fear Street books? Uh -huh. She calls them trash. Oh. And she says, this is effing trash that I buy for my stupid teenage daughter who doesn't know anything. Uh. That's what they said about R.L. Stein's books. Well, actually, back then, which it wasn't 19... 78 because my other son was born in 1988 what, what and the? fear street did not come out until the 80s so sorry this i'm talking about the scene from the first movie yeah i know oh that's the 90s oh, oh the first movie okay i was gonna say i don't even remember that scene oh that's how i'm telling you there's so many confusing things well i don't remember what people said about fear street because uh, we didn't buy that many of the books. We couldn't because they weren't available to buy, for one thing. So, and I'm just now listening to an audio Fear Street book, and we do have a couple. So, how does this? House. How does the uh, f actual Fear Street compare to this? Are they the same? No, they're no. not the same at all. Which but is like better? Like I said, the real deal, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, I, my other thing is. Netflix, this is to you. You should apologize to R.L. Stein and offer him twice the money you gave this lady to repair this ghastly, twisted piece of garbage. I really think that you've insulted, you're insulting to him, and uh, for you to give somebody who doesn't have any experience three movies. Who gets those things nowadays? I mean, come on, what's the deal here? Stop with this agenda crap. And, and people, give movies to people who know how to write a story. R.L. Stein knows how to write a story. He's had a ton of experience. Now, I'm not saying he's a director, and I'd be willing to bet he would never say he was a director either. But he certainly knows how to write a story. Okay? Except for the girl who cried monster. <coughs> well, whatever. And not everything he has done is perfect. But at least for the most part, he knows how to write a story. Okay? So, anyway, yeah. now I'm going to talk about what I liked. And unfortunately, there isn't much to grab onto. <laughs> now, I know Marco was making fun of the older... He was talking about the older sister... She's been, like, because where, being the perfect sister. Her and character, she talks about that. And every ta everybody, she has a best friend who's there, and her best friend's, like, a rogue counselor who they she, do. She does drugs with her boyfriend, who's another counselor. She's a grim one. And um, they also do uh, fake sex scenes. And so... Uh, with all their clothes uh, on, yeah. somehow... And, and she's really, she is really unlikable, her friend. But they talk about, or she talk, they used to, she used to be best friends with this good sister. I put, say, good in quotes. But anyway, so anyway, the little sister uh, doesn't like her either. Even though they're sisters, they're blood. They do care for each other in the way in the back of their minds. But they still, on the outside, they seem like they don't like each other because... The little sister, like Marco talked about, she's classified or labeled as weird. for some, I think it's because she has red hair. That's not a reason. Well, I've heard this many, many a time in the story. They never explained yeah, that that was the reason. No. They never no. said, you little ginger. <laughs> they, never, they never say, that, that's the thing, that's what I'm talking about. Lack of information, lack of cohesiveness. And why people do or say or whatever, do what they do, say what they say. Why do they do it? 
Why do they say that about her? Never explain. <laughs> she's so the, anyway. She's the Blair she, Ginger. <laughs> when they're in the throes of all this horrible, uh, a boy going after them with a hatchet who, who's pos completely possessed by this witch uh, that they talk about in both the first movie, kind of, which I never heard much talk about, except I guess at the beginning, but I didn't know what they were talking about. That's what I said. I was totally confused. The second movie, they they explain way more about that. But anyway, he's, she, he's completely possessed, okay? He doesn't even know who he is anymore or what he's doing. So he's going after everybody and anybody with the hatchet. I've never seen so many people get killed. You don't even get to see them get killed, though, like you want to. But like, you hear I wanted, lots of chopping. I wanted to see all of them get killed. I was looking so forward, so much forward to seeing this axe murdering. Uh, like in a Friday the 13th movie, but we don't even get to see that, of course, because, oh, why would a horror movie want to show the killing? Why would a horror movie do that? Well, anyway, the older sister explains why she's been acting like Miss, like Mary Poppins to her friend and to her sister, and she apologizes. And apparently they had something really bad happen. I guess their father ran out on the family and all this, and so I guess she was trying to be perfect to make up for what he did I, I you know some kind of weird but it that's the only part and then the other part I liked is just something I uh, checked into I don't don't ask me why and then the other thing was there was one section where the boy with the axe I mean he was in there quite a bit chopping around you know but the, the one of the last parts where he's going after, I think, the two sisters or maybe the friend and the the sister and the friend or all three, I can't remember. Or they actually play they actually played some appropriate uh, horror music that was really good. They 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 played for a little bit, but that was the only time they played that in the movie. <laughs> all the other times they stick in this random '70s song. Don't just, fear the reaper. They just stick it in there, and then they rip it out. Now, come on. What the hell? If you're going to have, I mean, really, <coughs> what is it that you do right about this movie? And if that, well, you can't even do the music right. I mean, you had it right for that part. I don't know how, how they ever did that, where the music came from, or who did it. But they actually did a good job. Maybe it's already made maybe the music has already exist it was written 50 years ago or something but it was appropriate for the scene they dug it up in the mall <laughs> <laughs> they got they went to the mall and they dug up a cd and it was like here you can use this good music for this little five second portion of the movie okay well in conclusion <laughs> believe it or not I thought that this movie was better than the last, mm -hmm. only because they explain more about the witch, which I didn't understand. I thought they were just name calling in the first movie. They were calling these people, a, I, I don't know, they were calling that, Mar Marco says she's a Mexican girl. I don't know. But I don't the, know what she the is. The girl, uh, the main girl, the one with the brother, they were, uh, I think they were calling her a witch, weren't they? And so, I, and then like, oh. The whole group, like, they're kind of nerds. Remember, the brother is a nerd because he is on the computer all the time, which wow. I know a lot of uh, Mar people Marco went to school with, they were on the computer a lot, too, and they weren't even, they weren't c considered nerds. These, so I don't even know, these, but back these, then... These bitches nowadays are on their computers all the time because a phone is just a miniature computer, and they're on those phones all the time uh, yeah, on TikTok right. and Twitter. Well, okay, and... okay, okay. They, anyway, and the teachers would get after them. They finally had to uh, say something about it. But anyway, that's way in, That's old news. But anyway... Um, I, I thought it was just because they gave more information about the witch. Like, like this goes back to what I'm saying. There is not enough information, and when they give it, it's it's very. I don't know. It's it's scattered. It's just like it's like uh, making a recipe, and you all of a sudden throw in all these different spices that may not even go together, and you just all of a sudden throw spice in here, and then you throw spice in there. 
and it doesn't work with for the story. But anyway, I'm going to have to watch the last part of the second one again because I'm confused. I, I the one the next one they're doing is about going way back to when the witch was a witch. In other words, when she was alive in Salem. I not Salem. They're not in Salem. They're in California. That, that that's another thing. California wasn't even around during that time. <laughs> so what did they 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 were in Massachusetts and like Salem, and then they transported across the airwaves to California. Well, you know, Arl Stein. You know, I think that. And the, oh God, I just thought of something. The original. I think that R.L. Stein meant the series to take place, the Fear Street series. I think that he meant for that series to take place in Ohio. Obviously, because it's Ohio where he came from. Right. And so they changed the setting to California. So they literally, if they had, uh, had it be Ohio, it would have made sense, right? Yeah, of yeah. course, which is where we live. So they changed it. And in fact, my older son, who read all these books... Oh, he loves it. Well, no, we don't know if he even, he's even seen it. That fanboy loves it. Uh, no, we don't know that. But anyway, um, he actually lives in Sunnyvale. Or he did. He lives next door in San Jose. But, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. And we're the ones who live in Ohio. And he grew up in Ohio. So, anyway, I'm going to tell you, I met R.L. Stein years ago when my other son was a kid and he was reading Goosebumps books. And I told him that they were, everybody in the class wanted to read them and they were jealous because he was reading them and the other kids didn't know how to read. And uh, he was really excited about that and he was happy they were making this series, which was The Haunted Mask and The Haunted Mask 2, but he was a very nice person. And I would have to believe that he is livid about this uh about these movies and he did make a comment marco saw it and he was very gracious but he really didn't reveal because without he just didn't say anything he didn't personal. say nothing he kept his mouth shut and because gracious and grown up and even discreet. even though netflix is literally raping his series he he's keeping his mouth shut okay I'm getting overheated and I'm hot. But anyway, um, you, so I what? get this movie. <laughs> every time I eat shrimp, if it's even an hour old, it makes me ill. And so I get a, I just give it bad shrimp. <laughs> I'm really uh, very uh, uh, sensitive to bad shrimp, unfortunately, because I like shrimp. But uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, and it's like, I, I like those Goosebumps shows, and I know this isn't Goosebumps. And I don't even know if I got to see any Fear Street shows. We saw, uh, what there was, was the a, Nightmare? There, there oh, wasn't was any Fear. There okay. was one Fear Street. There was a pilot for a, for a failed show called The Ghosts of Fear Street, and it had that little kid from the Leave it to Beaver remake, mm. and it was a goofball uh, baby show and it was terrible it was like some weird stupid story where the kid from leave it to beaver he gets he gets possessed by a dog or something and he goes like bark 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 and that's the story and it was trash well we i also saw some of the nightmare room which is another series of rl stein i also bought his uh this is the book uh, it was a hardback and had stories in it, and uh, they were older kids or adults. I can't remember. And he he actually autographed the book for us. But anyway, I really I think you ought to give him the series back. And if you want a decent Fair Street movie series, why don't you uh, pay him twice as reparations for what you did? For what you paid somebody who absolutely has no experience doing this kind of thing and did a terrible job and her friend or assistant or whatever he is and uh he could rl stein could do it by himself 
and I know he had a woman director, I think her name's Kennedy, and she she worked with Steven Spielberg too. Oh, that that <laughs> biatch. <laughs> anyway, that that anyway, bitch I, is a producer. She's not a director. Okay. She can't direct anything. Well, I she don't can know. go to hell. Okay, well whatever. I I'm sure Don't that, even mention her. Okay, well he he, he did all the stories then uh for Goosebumps and Nightmare Room and all these other book series, those uh, remember those series of books where you had to figure out the end? You could pick an ending, and uh, there were like two or three endings, and you had to pick one, and you followed all the pages that followed that particular ending. And yeah, he did that. He didn't get have any help from some. Uh, a knowledgeable and an experienced assistant and he's a writer I mean he's been writing for a long time so please pay him twice what you paid her you get a better product and find a director who knows what they're doing which I don't know if she did a bad it's not the I don't think it's the directing necessary. yeah it is because she's in charge of all the performances oh and well, she wrote it, too. Well, the writing is abominable. Okay? I'm sorry. But it is. Okay? So, that's it No, that's me. that's not okay. I gotta rate it. Okay. Well, Marco has not rated it. Sorry. I forgot. I'm about to die. We're in a car. We have to do this because of the acoustics. And I'm about to die. It's so hot. Well, so that's, that's, that's why people have a studio. Because of the good acoustics. Well, we don't have the and... money to get a studio, so... And now let's talk about... Now, I do have something that I forgot to mention that I liked. and so, Because the only thing I liked was the cast. But that's not the only thing that I liked, technically. I like... There's this one part where uh, the, the quote-unquote weird girl is fighting with Tommy. And she gets a potato sack. The F are you doing? It's time to feed. F off with that shit. Marco. Okay, and so you just derailed my entire train of thought. Good. You want this review to go on for five hours? Well, come on then, hon. Let's go. Jesus, Sophie. What are you trying to? What do you? What? What do you want to protect this movie from my roasting? Are you afraid of my roasting this terrible trash effing movie? Okay. Move along. And, and so, no. I'm going to take longer now just because you said something. The best part of this movie was the part where she's fighting with the guy, Tommy. Because Tommy is the bad guy. And she's fighting him. And she puts a potato sack on his head to disorient him. And it's funny because it's really cool because it's like it's it's one of the it's 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 a really great idea because instead of him putting on the potato sack like he's putting on a mask like Jason or Michael Myers instead of that it's an accident to where she put it on his head to try to disorient him and then it turns into it being his mask and so it's like an accidental mask. And so that was actually really cool how, how that worked out. And I thought that uh, that was one of the coolest things about the movie. Now, what are some other things I should say to make this review longer? Um, well, I the one thing, the, the, the older sister, she was trash. Because she acted like every boring horror female character. Like every boring final girl. You have the final girl character who acts like, Oh, I'm really, I'm really innocent. And I don't do anything wrong. And I'm a nice girl. And I, I follow the rules. And you should follow the rules. And then, it, and then, of course, she's the one who gets killed, which I thought was good, but we didn't really get to see it. Oh, that was another thing. They hacked up the little sister, too. Just yeah. as much. And the... The, sh the sheriff, as a kid, come. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't know his name. Comes over and uh, gives her uh, 
the, the chest of He saves her. And saves her. She Somehow. Saves her. I, 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 Somehow. I, I don't get that at all. They showed those axe people ha hacking both of those girls in the blood and it was so It was there. so comical because while they're being hacked, they're somehow talking. <laughs> I'm sorry that I am the best. <laughs> and meanwhile, she's saying that chop, 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 in the, chop. In their chest. How does that work? How could he even <laughs> save her? I, I don't get it. And the other girl dies, but somehow she's saved. Yeah. I said, well, what's that about? Because that's what was supposed to happen, I guess. That makes and no sense. Another thing is that the, the gremlin girl, uh, she sees, she actually has a vision of what everything that's going to happen, and then somehow that doesn't affect anything in the movie at all. And so basically she has a vision for nothing. And, and you'd think that, she, that the gremlin would have a vision and then that would impact the movie and that she could actually change what happens. But no, everything just goes to plan, of course. And the ending with the, the, the disposable uh, lesbian girl and her brother, uh, Eugene from Your Honor, uh, that ending is even worse than anything in the whole movie because they bury up a hand in the mall and then she touches the hand and she's transported back in time with her brother. And if you think that sounds stupid, uh, I can't even imagine what part three is going to be. Because this movie... And so I would rate this movie... What I did was I drank something new while watching this movie. And I was trying a new flavor of G Fuel, which I like drinking. And that's actually why I was able to stay awake watching this boring piece of shit movie. Because I was drinking G Fuel. And it was snow cone flavored. And it didn't taste anything like snow cones. It was false advertising and it was garbage. And that's what I would rate this movie. This movie is G Fuel snow cone flavor. <laughs> And it might be the worst flavor, or one of the top five or three worst flavors oh, of G Fuel. Oh, no. But it's fine because God. it, because, you know, the, the, uh, it, it might be okay, you know, having it uh, just once, but never again. Uh, and I would never watch this movie again at all. And so if you like this video, what should people do, Safi? Uh, well, uh, I hope you would subscribe. Subscribe if you're interested. You're interested. And if you uh, thumbs up. If you want to give it a thumbs up, comment and make a comment because what did you think? What do you think about this? If you have any uh, affiliation or recognition of R.L. Stein, of what he's written before, what do you think he thinks about these movies? And do you agree with me that maybe they should turn this back over to him? And double what they paid him, her, her. They need to him. write an official apology for this series. Yes. What do this you agree with that? This is a disgrace to Fear Street. Well, well it's just uh, disgusting. Yeah. So. Goodbye, everybody. See you Bye. soon.